Hey, 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 my name is Polish Lynx and welcome to Sakura MMO, uh, which I actually right now record the day I return to work from my one week off. And so I'm honestly not looking forward to record uh, to recording to returning there, of course. For technically, when the video is up, uh, I'm after the work already. And well, I definitely won't enjoy that. And uh, anywho, anywho, let's get back to the pleasant place. Letter date night. I still can't really believe it. It's getting dark outside, and my chamber is lit only by a few flickering candles. Fion stands at one of the windows, staring out into the distance. The tops of the trees look like blackened silhouettes against the starry night sky, and the gently undulating hills of Asaph roll outwards like waves. The moon is high in the sky. It's a perfect crescent shape with pointed ends. A few stars twinkle up above. They look very small and cold. It makes me feel thankful that I have so many candles to keep me warm in my boudoir. And a very cute, twitchy little thief girl wearing her underwear. Only that. Nothing more. What's wrong, little puppy? I crossed the room with a few steps, standing by Fion's side. I'm a few inches taller. You already said that. Then she is. I peer out of the window alongside her. Did something touch your eye? I was just thinking, it's only been a few days, but so much of my life has changed already. I'm living in a huge castle, I have servants, uh, well, technically you don't have them. And I'm eating fancy foods I've only ever dreamed of. Is that a problem? Yes. <gasps> Weird. I don't understand why you're doing all this for me. I'd do much more for you, if you only you would let me... Won't you let me replace your filthy TF's guard for something more? Suitable. No, thank you. Fion pulls her face. I've never worn a dress before in my life, and I ain't about to start now. Long hems are such pain, and they trip you when you run, and I'd rather die than wear a corset. You're so stubborn. All girls look nicer when dressed up in silk and scenery. You know. Too bad, I'm not believing in your castle, but I ain't here at all. How mean. I just want to make you look cute. You should consider yourself lucky you to wear those awful rugs you like so much during the daytime. I have a whole room filled with beautiful gowns and dresses that would suit you perfectly. I already said I ain't interested. What a headstrong girl. Ah, uh, well. I sigh. <sighs> I suppose I can't force to do anything you don't want. Huh? That's funny coming from the dark witch. I thought you don't make me wear rugs and treat me like some god slave. I doubt I could dress you in a tire more rug than you on your casual clothes. <laughs> Good point. And I didn't bring you here to be a servant, you see, girl? You'll never be up to best never when it comes to housework. And I'm afraid she'd be jealous of any competition. I instead brought you here to be my... Companion or Ali. Seriously? I'm supposed to decide between those two. And here I was worried she would say something like my pet. Um, let's go companion. I bring my fingers beneath Fion's chin and tip her head upwards. You have been invited to join the Steam group, SNK. Play more, whatever that is. You have such a pretty face like a doll's. Despite your upbringing, it would be a shame to force you into a lifetime of servitude. Hey, wait, actually, I can actually check this on the phone. What the hell is that thing? Because I definitely don't want to pop into the Steam uh, on PC now. I have more than enough drudges as this, and you are far too special to join their ranks. Flutter will get you nowhere! Uh, yes, I did. Okay. 
I don't need to flatter you to get what I want. I'm the great dark witch. The hell is that thing? When I see something I deserve, take it. Like so. Uh, it is a Japanese video hardware and software company. Alright. Neo Geo family of Arcade. Uh, okay, what are you working on right now? Handheld console. Alright, I'm interested. I will join this group, whatever. I mean, I'm in over 300 already, so one more will not change anything. I press a quick kiss against Fion's lips. Smudge. Fion gasps at the sensation from surprise or pleasure. I don't know. Her cheeks color. I want to play with her some more, but I think I've tormented her enough, enough as it is. She's suffering from an intense culture shock, and all the nice present to her at the dinner table didn't help. I'll leave her for uh, I'll leave her be for now. I draw away, Fion pants heavily, but she does wipe her lips clean with the back of her arm. Maybe she's starting to enjoy my kisses and caresses. <laughs> I do hope so. That would make this little arrangement much more enjoyable for the both of us. It's just strange. What is? I've heard so many stories about the dark witch, but you ain't as terrifying as I thought. What do people say? Indulge me. Some people say you ain't a human, but a monster. They say you have three heads, or claws, or scaly wings. Other people say you kidnap babies and boil them to make potions. I've heard you abuse your servants, and if they displease you, you slaughter them without blinking. And you fast on their remains like a dog. Do people say such things about me in the all the, all the villages? I've heard whispers of people think you're some kind of cannibal. Well, they might not be too far from the truth. As you should know. I have a penchant for devouring pretty young girls. Leo! So what do you think about me now you spend some time living by my side? You still believe that stories? Well, you're confusing all right, and I don't really understand you, but... You took me to your home and gave me food and clothes. I don't think you're evil. You're just a bit peculiar. <laughs> well, that's one way to describe me. My little thief girl is being unusually judicious this evening. Maybe she started to get accustomed to me. Truth be told, my life here is nicer than uh, the life I had before. Always scrunching for coins and begging for scraps, but it's all happening so fast, I'm not quite sure what to make of it. My head's spinning. My whole life is so far now, so far away. Fion stares out the window. She reaches forward with her fingertips, for I don't know what she's trying to reach. The moon. The stars. Her own past. But it's all too far away. Hey, Lady Viola, can I ask you a... Uh, I wanted to say a question, but can I ask you something? What is it, my dear little thief? Well, first I'll tell you something, I guess. It's about my childhood. Your childhood? Hmm. How interesting. I raise an eyebrow. I suppose the moonlight is making her sentimental, not that I blame Fion. When I look out, it as if illuminated beneath the moonlight, it makes me remember things too. My life in Tokyo. A life I've long since left behind me. You don't know that, okay? I guess Fion and I aren't so different after all. Is that why she's confiding in me all of a sudden? Maybe she senses within me a kindred spirit. Like her, I'm a woman who was turned away from my old home and forced into a brand new, sometimes baffling life. Very well, you may proceed. I kidnapped Fionn parti partially because she discovered my joint identity, and partially because of her cute, darling face, but it's not like I'm uninterested in who she is as a person. If she's willing to tell me about her past, I'd be more than happy to listen. I want to know all about her, and not just how to make her blush. When I told you about my family before, well, I might have told one or two white lies. I figured. You see, my parents are... Achievement Honor, the truth comes out. 
You see, my parents are already dead and I don't have lots of younger brothers and sisters to look after. But I do have one real sister. So it seems part of her story wasn't entirely inaccurate. What is your sister called? She's called Holly and she's a few years older than me. We were born in a city called Malhia. It's a very pretty city. We will love beautiful fine buildings and flowers everywhere. Maltier is ruled by a noble family, and there are guards all around the city walls. Maltier, hmm. You know it? Of course. Maltier is one of the biggest in Asaf. There are a lot of markets there, much better than the one, the one in the half tournament. If my memory serves me correctly, I purchased most of the furniture that decorates my home from Maltier. <laughs> I should have figured, most people have heard of it. Well, anyway. Fionn looks back out of the window, her bare fingers rest against the stone window sills. Window sills. A cool breeze runs through her blonde hair, which makes her shiver. Maybe I should give her more clothes to wear. But she looks so cute with her skin peeling her yeah. Throwing up all that smooth tan skin would be such a shame. My mother died shortly after giving birth to me. I never really knew her. My sister and my father were upset about it, of course, but they did their best to keep me healthy and happy. And when the first saw that my mother was dead because I held them, they meant the word to me, and I loved them dearly. Fionn sighed softly. I cannot tell that this story won't have a happy ending. If it did, Fionn wouldn't have been reduced to the dirty, sneaky little thief with fast fingers that she is now, swiping purses and pilfering pockets to afford enough bread to eat. My father owned a small grocery store. After mother's death, my sister started helping him. I wanted to help too, but when they got in the way, so we were happy. My father bought fruits, vegetables from local farmers for cheap prices and sold them on the higher rates. He worked for long hours and never complained. Maybe it's cause he needed something to fill his days with after a mother's death, so he didn't think too much time thinking about her and being sad. The shop had always been successful, or so I've heard, but it really started to take off after mother's death. We got a big house and me, sister and me had nice clothes, and we always had enough to eat. We had shoes to wear, pretty ribbons for her, and we even had enough money to spare to keep a pet dog. We had everything we could have wanted, and I was never sad or lonely. At least until one day. Fionn inherits her expression twists. The city guards knocked out on the door of our shop when we were all close for evening and demanded to speak to my father. They! They! Fionn strums her words digging her throat. It looks like she's having a bit of trouble recounting the end of the tale. What happened? I mean, I think I know what happened. I rest the gentle hand threshold. This time Fionn doesn't tense up, and neither does she shrink away from me. Instead, she leans in my touch, her lift, I think, to have a little human contact and lets her eyelashes fall shut. She ponders for a few moments. Before she resumes her tale once more. The guard said they'd heard suspicious reports about my father's behavior. They believed his business was driven because of unlawful business practices. Like what? They thought he was in cahoots with dark witches. Dark witches and myself are considered the enemies of our Safian society. People shouldn't and resent us, much like they do with the Darklings. Some dark witches are so powerful nobody would ever dare to stand against them, but others. They are not so lucky. One of the quests in Asaf Online involved defending a dark witch who had been accused of a crime she did not commit and clearing her name. It's part of this world's lore, I suppose. And why did I pick Dark Witch as my character class? I guess I like a challenge. Dark Witch is one of the hardest classes to play as, but it's also one of the most rewarding. rewarding. When we near our level cap, our magic and defense stats are much higher than any other class. I understand why we do that. Plus being a lawyer, I'm already accustomed to people hating me. They thought my dad was buying vegetables from Dark Witches, which had been grown with illegal magics. Seriously? Why would they think that? Because people started complaining about my family. They filled reports with the city council saying our food had made them sick. They accused my dad of being a witch sympathizer and they said he was trying to poison everyone. Was there any truth to these rumors? It's true my dad did some business dealings with witches, but there was nothing wrong with the vegetables. He felt sorry for them because nobody else would buy from them and they were desperate and starving. My dad just wanted to help him, but the city folk used that as a reason to attack us. They resented us because of our nice house and our nice clothes, so we tried to bring us down. 
The city guards came to our house and they tried over. I mean, they turned over our belongings looking for proof that my dog was trying to find the citizens of Moutier. They couldn't find anything of ours because it was all made up, but they then even more convinced that was hiding something and they took him away from us. They imprisoned him. They tortured him trying to extract a confession from him. And then they left him to die in prison. You know what? I feel like going and destroying that city. Let's do this. Finn sneezes. Her shoulders shake. That was pretty weak before they imprisoned him. He still hadn't gotten over mother, and he's never been the healthiest of people. And after that, my sister and me were on our own. We couldn't pay for our nice house, so we were thrown out on the streets, and nobody would help us. They all said we deserved it. I was only 10 years old at the time. Are you kidding me? We are going to destroy that city, okay? My sister was 16. And what happened to her? How did you get separated? I decided to leave her on my, of my own volition. My sister had to take an odd job to afford food for the two of us, but there weren't enough money. She worked long and hard, but she didn't eat enough. She always saved the best bits of food for me. She got so thin and pale I couldn't help but worry about her. I worried I was making her sick. So you ran away? That's right. I left out here and I didn't tell my sister. I ran away to start my own life when I was 12. But I never really expected to live that long. I just want to help my sister. I just want to be burdened with her. But you're still alive. I'm tougher than I thought. I learned how to be light with my fingers and I stole what I needed to survive. I was so busy worrying about me and how to get food that I stopped thinking about my sister. I haven't had the luxury to care about anyone other than myself for years. But now... Fion looks back out of the window. The cool wind ruffles her hair, making it flutter around her face. She suffered too much for her young years. She could only be 18 or 19. She sacrificed her own life to help her sister, and she grew up far too quickly. I wonder. I'm leaving this fancy castle. I have all the food I could want, and I don't need to beg or steal. I have more than enough returned things, so I've been thinking for the first time in eight years. About your sister? That's right. Do you regret leaving her? I did what I thought I had to. I was just trying to help her. Now I start to wonder. I left and never told her where I was going. She must be worried sick about me. Fionn looks at me. Her eyes shine beneath the moonlight. I don't know if my sister is still mouse here, and I don't know how she's doing. But if you wouldn't mind, then you have the time. Would you mind taking me to mouse here? I want to see if she's still there, and I want to see if there's anything I can do to help her. It does seem fair that I should be allowed to live the life of luxury while she's toiling away at all jobs and working her fingers to the bone just to afford a bite to eat. You really are a kind-hearted, aren't you? I smiled and ran my hands through my little team's blonde hair. You ran away for her sister's sake, and now you want to return to her side to see how she is. Oh, please, I wanted more anything in the world. I'll do anything you ask, absolutely anything, if we can see her. Anything? I raised an eyebrow. Fionn's cheeks color, but she tries to maintain her composure. That's right, I'll even wear, wear a corset. <laughs> now that's a funny idea. I don't mind if you insult or debase me or make me a uh, fool out of me. You're the great dark witch Vela. If anybody can find my sister, I know you can. So, are you saying you trust me? I'm saying you ain't as evil as imagined. I, I don't have anybody else I can turn to. I don't have any friends or companions. There is nobody else. Um, there is nobody else who will help me find my sister, so please. Would you? Hmm. I tap my fingers against my lower lip as I think. Sounds like a pain, but how can I say no when you're begging so very sweetly? Oh, Lady Viola, thank you, thank you! What do you want me to do? Should I lick your shoes? Should I strip off my clothes? Do you want to do question things to me and my innocent sweet body? Uh, <laughs> well, that does sound rather appealing, and I'm glad you're so eager to please, but... I run my hands through Fionn's head. Your story has melted my heart. You have a heart? Indeed. If I didn't, I would die. You've touched something deep within me. I suppose I can help fulfill your request just this once, without requesting any form of repayment. Oh, Lady Viola, you are too kind! I know. I pat Fionn's head a little more roughly and then pull her onto my chest. Yeah! Fionn squeaks in surprise as I hold her close, enveloping my arms around her middle. Hugging is payment enough. 
Tion stands there awkwardly for a few moments, as for expecting some kind of sneak attack, but when no attack comes, she gradually relaxes against my chest. Her body almost seems to melt against mine. She's so soft and warm. Elvushine is slightly unsure of herself, Fion raises her arms and slowly wraps them around my waist. She buries her face in my chest. She sniffles. Is she... crying? Thank you, miss. Thank you. You really are good after all. Well, I wouldn't be too sure about that. I rest my chin top of me on smoothy blonde head. Grateful, so cute. She's even cuter when she cries like this. Oh my god, I don't like that text. I so don't like that text. The text like that pisses me off, to be honest. When someone says, Oh, she's even cuter than she's normally when she cries. God damn it. That's ridiculous. But the worst thing is like, Oh, maybe I should make her cry more often because she's super cute then. Seriously, that's annoying. Anyway. You better be prepared, my little thief girl. We'll go to Motier tomorrow. Let's see if we can find your sister. And if she's half as pretty as Finn, she may make a valuable addition to my collection. <laughs> oh, I haven't done this in a long time, actually, you know. <laughs> so, this is Motier. I mean, this is Sky. <laughs> it's been such a long time since I came back here. I feel kind of nostalgic. Fionn holds one head to her chest, perhaps her heart, heart hurts, as she looks around. I look around with her, just as curious but less emotionally invested. Moutier looks just like it did during my days of playing as a phone line. Moutier, charming city with a distinctly European vibe, uh, much like most of the towns and cities in Asaf. Oh, is that true? Because I honestly... Maybe. I guess class Japanese architecture doesn't give you that fantasy feeling. I would say it does. The buildings are all white, so bright and pure it almost hurts to look at. I mean, technically, then awesome... I mean, no, you know... The Japanese houses with tatami mats and so on. I would say it's pretty good for a fantasy setup. But the ground is made of uneven cobblestones mixed with broken bits of pale pink and white shells. I can hear the sound of waves in the distance. Maltier is built by the sea, and there are a large number of tedious fishing quests available around the docks. I've never enjoyed fishing quests. Fortunately, that isn't the reason why my party and I came here today. Okay, I'm curious if she completed those quests anyway. I mean, she said that she completed everything, but... Maybe that's something she didn't. So much time has passed since I just lost so this place, but... Sent here, it feels like time. no time passed at all. It's weird. I rest a hand against Fionn's shoulder. It's alright. You can take your time to remember. Okay, kind miss. Thank you. Now, now. I toot. I'm this guy's just commoner right now. That means you shouldn't call me Miss, it would give away my real identity. I see that uh, Viola? That's right. Uh, calling you by your name really feels kinda weird. Not as weird as going back to this place for She turns back to the white building and the cobblestone paths. It looks just like I remembered it. It's like I've never been away. <clears throat> Never clears her throat. Forgive me for my impatience, but we have a mission too, do we not? That's right, my sister. Well, it's been eight years since you last came here. I suppose waiting another half an hour or so will do your sister any harm. That is, if she even is here. W what did you say? I'm saying, if you truly wanted to visit her, you may have left it a bit late. She might have moved on by now. In fact, I would be more surprised if she hadn't. Why would she come to wait for the return of a wayward sister who hasn't bothered to contact her in almost a decade? Fionn's face turns red. Eh, 
you sound like I couldn't be bothered to go to girl. Just even at the memes, and anyway, it was too busy trying to save your own skin. I don't know, because I want to help my sister, so I'm sound like a villain. You're a darling here, not me. So you're insulting my race as a means to cover up your own embarrassment? Do what you will, but I find that to be in rather poor taste. You started it! You too. I sigh and press a hand against my forehead. Ah, yare yare. I might be the dark witch viola, feared and respect the cross all of us as of, but I can't get these two girls to get along with one another for more than five minutes. You know what might help? Get them into one room, get them drunk, and move out. It might help. They wouldn't fight, they would do something else. Trying with these two is going to be a huge pain, I can already tell. Maybe I should threaten them when we get back, I could do this and that. And maybe even that! <sighs> now she's like, you know, panting, crazy, excited, that would show them not to misbehave again so flagrantly. <laughs> Excuse me, you there? Oh? Fion job, she wills about it. It's a guard. The guard is garbed in the attire of a knight, and she has a sheathed sword dangling at her feet. She has loose flowing hair. Wouldn't that get in the way when she's trying to fight? And sharp and her eyes lined with long lashes. Cute. For some reason, her stern face awakens certain memories inside me. What? Why does she look so familiar? She isn't an NPC in Asaf, is she? Some cookie cutter? Cutter? City guard? Identical NPCs stand all around the gates of Montier in the Asaf Online. Not for any real purpose, but because they make the game look more lively. A few of them give you fetch quests, I think. But I don't think this girl is an NPC. Her outfit is too detailed for that. Even if she was an NPC in past life, now that I'm inside the real Asaf, she'll be her very own person. A human with thoughts and feelings, hopes and dreams. Is this your first time in Montia? Oh no, I've been here before when I was little, but I haven't been back in a while. Fionn's accent, I know it seems to get thicker the more flaccid she is, it's kinda of charming. The guard purses her lips together, she doesn't look impressed. Maybe she's something of a snob. Well, what about your traveling companions? I have been here before too, many times in fact. For not quite like this. And I have too. Good. So you should know all about the rules here. Please do not make a disturbance during your stay in Meltier. If you do, you will be forcibly removed from our good city. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> I mean, they are right with the mission of finding her sister. But. I'm here to destroy that city, okay? After what they did to our precious uh, thief girl. <clears throat> so yeah. But don't tell her to her. Don't say anything. They don't need to know about it. Forcing remove her. Huh? Who does this little cheat think she is? Maybe I should try to knock some of the wind out of her sails. Mock the night. Flirt with the night. <laughs> okay, she's cute. I would never dream of making disturbance, my good lady knight. I take a step forward and curl stand of the nice long loose hair about my index finger. You have such a charming face, you'd pay me great to reduce it to tears. Please take this more seriously. The guard draws away from me jerky, for she's trying to sound cool and unaffected. Her cheeks are starting to turn pink. I guess she's in the custom to close contact. <laughs> this one might be quite fun to play with, despite that sword came on her She has very soft silky hair and her face. This part is prepared to all narrow dice. Well, it's rather pretty. Maybe I could recruit her to my ever expanding harem. For judging by her serious expression, I doubt that will ever happen. Hey. Hey. How dare you? I mean, I don't like harems, 
but that doesn't mean we might not end up... Wait, is it possible? Wait, she might be the third ending or something. Well, it might be possible we'll end up with her in the end, right? Who knows, we'll see. Moreover, as you are not here, you will not be allowed to remain the city until after sundown. There's a curfew? That's correct. I don't remember not here having curfew or anything before. The law has been re passed recently, for it comes from the highest authority, it was determined by the High Lord himself. Oh, oh. That is the reason why. There has been a string of thefts and burglaries throughout the streets of Moutier recently. Shops are being broken too. Players' family jewelry is being lifted from drawers. Even jars of honey and bread are being taken from pastures. This curfew is in place for the good people of Moutier from thieves. If you linger too long in our city, you will be treated like criminals, and you will have to pay the price. Please keep that in mind. Hey, but you can't treat us like criminals before we've even done anything wrong. Ah, uh, the guard's eyes flush. Does that mean you might be planning on doing something in the future? No, that isn't what I meant. Don't twist my words. And the rule innocent until you proven guilty? That is a common maxim, yeah, but it does not apply in this situation. But yeah, any outsider will be treated with suspicion. That's simply how things are. Wait, what about the insiders? The hell? <laughs> Don't argue back, Fionn. Fionn's the last person to complain about this laws, considering her profession, but I suppose I understand her indignation. Being regarded as potential suspects of an uncommitted crime, the moment we enter the city leaves a bad taste in my mouth too. If only I could grin this upstart little night beneath my hue and watch her face contorted pain as she begs for forgiveness. But she just didn't up. I shouldn't hate her for that. You know what? Now that you said that those that line, that line that is right now on the stream to which I returned. Now that you said that. What if this girl we are seeing right now is the girl that she actually did that to at the very beginning of the game hey 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 that might be her hmm. who would have thought we would meet again well if it really is her certainly I didn't because we didn't get any kind of CG or anything back there. Uh, so yeah. If that's the same person. Well. Nice. But she just didn't stop. I shouldn't hate her for that. I hope. <clears throat> I hope you understand. But if you don't, you are always free to leave. No. We can't leave. We came here for a reason, and we can't turn back now! Totally not a suspicious text. Very good. Now then. All visitors to the city must sign the guest book and let us ask a few questions. Why do you want to know so much? For our protection, of course. Everything we do in Montier, we do in the... For the good of our citizens. Alright, alright, fine. Fiance, she geeks at a loose pebble on the ground with the tip of her shoe. I guess we haven't gotten any choice. I'll let you ask all the questions you want, but I ain't doing it for you. I'm doing this for Holly. Fionn casts her eye about the streets of Moutier. She sighs. Holly, I hope you really are here. It's been too long since I last saw you. Uh, let's end the episode here, and tomorrow... We will continue this. Yeah. Alright, for now, hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.